was poppin'. Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that. Hey T Squad, it's me Keisha, and I am here with this explosive, juicy T Field episode of Behind the Scenes T. Now I've been telling you guys ever since this past week's episode of Love and Marriage DC aired that I had the behind the scenes T on why Winter started side eyeing Yusha, her boo thing at the time. Well, come to find out, baby, Yusha was not who he claimed to be, and it seemed as if he was using her and that he actually had eyes for somebody else on the cast. You heard right, honey. This comes from the horse's mouth herself, Winter. This was some exclusive tea that she gave me last year when I interviewed her and I have kept it under wraps this whole entire time but take a look at the behind the scenes tea that was left out of the episodes that really would have gave context on why she started looking at Yusha differently because once again there's so much that is not being shown on the show that should be but hey, they only got but so much time to show everything. So this is some exclusive behind the scenes tea on the Winter and Yusha saga. Let's get into this tea, child. But you know, I'm in this season of my life where I'm making sure that I'm vetting people this time. And you have to. And you got one good time to show me some crazy. And I'm out of here. Peace. Um, but girl, outside of him being just dead broke and... <laughs> I'm just not gonna be able to do it at this point in my life. Hell no. Uh-uh. Um, no. Uh-uh. You ain't got time to take care of no man. Absolutely okay. not. No. Trying to be serious about being a 37-year-old rapper just does not sit well with my soul. And he's very serious about that. <laughs> Aside from oh, that. I thought there was something he just did on the side for fun. Nope. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Bye, Yusha. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. 30 rapper but aside from that I got a phone call that informed me that he had been trying to pitch scenes to production behind my back do you expose it on the show I I don't learn this until like literally a few days ago what how did Sherelle and him feel when they found out that he was doing it they are pissed yeah, she said you need to blast his. At you least. sure I'll do. Yeah, that's oh, trifling. That's so trifling. I, I also learned that he auditioned for Ready to Love, and I asked him about it, and he said, "I don't want you to trip when I tell you this." And I was like, "Well, why would I trip?" He said, I auditioned for Ready to Love, but the guy told me I made it all the way to the end round and they decided not to put me on the show because he said they didn't have nobody for me. They said I was a cool guy. They thought I was a good dude, but they didn't have nobody for me. He said, in fact, the only person they felt like I would match with was Joy. Wow. That's why I, I don't know if you remember from our first conversation. And when I interviewed all, I interviewed everybody from Love and Marriage DC before the show even aired. And I was telling every one of you guys, I said, y'all got to be careful because when y'all, this show comes out, people are going to be coming from all left and right. And you just never know who's really for you and who's just trying to be attached to you. Like it's crazy. It's so crazy. The crazy part is that Black and Sherelle really have known, like, well, not Sherelle. Black has known him for a decade, okay? So him coming by recommendation of them, of course, made me feel more right, comfortable. comfortable. At least giving him an opportunity. But I'm grateful that I took my time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no rush to do anything. Yeah. But they actually learned a lot about him. So I make that comment about Joy, and I'm telling you this. So when you watch the second half, half of that episode, when you watch the second 10 and we get to, it'll be our cash trip. So when we get to our cash trip, there's an incident that occurs. Remember what I told you. Did he try to come on to her? Remember what I'm telling you. 
as to why him giving me that information becomes a problem. I'm sorry that happened. I'm so, I'm happy and I'm sorry because you got to see him for who he was. No, I it not only not only did I black and Sherelle. Yeah, it yeah. literally and he doesn't just watch the second half, Keisha. I promise you. Me telling you this ahead of time when you watch it, you'll you'll pick up on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got enough. You'll probably review it. You'll see it. Yeah, yeah. When I tell you. We're, so he does some confessionals the second half. He starts to getting integrated in confessionals, okay? And he's asked about Joy. And he was like, you know, Joy has this type of quiet love. Like, you don't know her. What do you mean she has a quiet love? Oh, wow. But he does something at that cash trip and goes against his friend of 10 years, to which causes our first argument because I was blown. And oh. there's a, a later revelation after that cash trip that sends me over the edge. I was in my last serious relationship. It was with one of my best friends, friend. She'd known him for years. And so when we started to date and we had a tumultuous relationship, she started to see sides of him that she never, because you never know about a person until they date somebody. So you live yep. with them. And she was <laughs> like, what? I can't believe he said that or did. And I was like, he sure did, honey. So I feel I feel bad for Sherelle and Black, but it's a good thing that they know now because like I say, money and fame and 15 seconds of fame will show you who oh, really, for sure. really are. He was being opportunistic with, with us all. Like for me, it was the, the safest, most protected situation it could have happened in. Yeah. Like, other people might be like, oh, I'm like, no. This was good. Actually, yeah. I believe it would have came out. People are going to have various opinion opinions on him anyway, just based off of how he maneuvers the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I always tell my viewers, don't they know, man, uh, that still do poetry, that still rap. <laughs> Them the ones that will get you and ruin your life. Uh -uh. And credit. And yeah. credit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me too, he, you know, you and I are believers. I think we talked about that before. Oh yes, most definitely. Um, girl, he called himself a believer. That's how I identify. I call myself a believer, but don't get it twisted. I believe in sweet baby Jesus wrapped in a pamper swatler, okay? Mm-hmm. Period. So we got into a conversation like a month ago. He was like, well, I just want to prepare you. Like I'm going to be kind of MIA for the next 30 days. And I was like, MIA for the next 30 days? Like what's what's going on? He was like, well, you know, I'm Muslim. Goodbye, sir. What? He said, I'll be practicing Ramadan. Like, Will you present? I said, why did you tell me you were a believer? He was like, well, I consider myself like half Muslim and half Christian. I read the Bible and the Quran. So I was like, I've never heard of Muslim. <laughs> child, I cannot with these men. This is why I'm over here by myself, child. I don't have time to be shaking nobody's son. What is wrong with people? Oh, my word. What is half and half? How? Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Like, I have never straw that last two straws that broke the camel's back when I sung for the national anthem. I could only take one plus one, which I took my my good girlfriend because I needed a woman there to you know help me yeah. out. He was like, "Well, I can move some things around if you want me to be there. I have a meeting, but I can cancel." I was like, "No, no, no worries. I I only have one plus one. I'm going to take my my girlfriend, my good friend." So. Literally going to the national anthem. Now, this is a big deal for me. Most people who have sung for years don't get this opportunity, let right. alone somebody like myself. And he called me before on the way to the state, to the arena. And he was like, ask me about 
confessionals the next day. And I'm like, why are you asking me about the confessionals? Knowing that I have something big that's about to happen. Right. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. I'm not going to trip Keisha. Maybe he's just busy and preoccupied. I do the national anthem. Now, my friend who is there with me, like, she's so happy and proud and excited. She's literally about to run a lap in this arena. Like, she is right. they, excited. He calls me afterwards, and he was like, hey, where are you at? And I was like, I'm out to eat. Now, mind you, he lives in D.C., and we're in D.C., out to eat. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I got a chance to go look at your uh, performance on your publicist page, and you did a good job. You should be proud. Like, that's what's up. You know, you did everything your vocalist and your your you know, your vocal coach um, told you to do. Like, you know, it sounded good. You should be proud. You did your thing. That's it. But I hear you out right now. It sounds really loud in there. You know, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm. So I'm like, um. I can never imagine any of my friends, my boyfriends, my family members having a moment this big and being so dry. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't about him and he wasn't involved in it. That's what everybody says. Yeah. 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 He's but a mixer and a user. Yep. He just a didn't fit well with me. And I was annoyed for the rest of that week. Straw that broke the camel's back and I broke up with him on Saturday was his daughter. Stayed the night over my house along with Sherelle's daughters. Mm -hmm. All four of them had a sleepover here in my home. And it's Easter. My daughter wanted to do an Easter egg hunt. Okay, no problem. He called us Saturday morning. He said, hey, might I speak to my daughter right quick? And I said, sure. He, he, you know, she spoke to him. She gave the phone back to me. And he was like, what y'all about to do today? And I'm like, oh, Autumn wanted to do an Easter egg hunt. He said, absolutely not. We don't do that. I thought he was a <laughs> A Christian Muslim. I said, Ex excuse me? He said, no, y'all need to find something else to do. Like we don't, we don't do pagan holidays. We're not doing it. Excuse you? Well, we gonna do it. <laughs> First of all, who's talking to? Right. I said, I don't understand what the problem is, but Sherelle's youngest daughter is three. And I'm not in the habit of breaking Easter egg hunt promises to a three-year-old. Yeah. Your daughter is 14. You can call her and explain to her that she can't participate and I'll give her something else to do. Right. But this Easter egg hunt is going down. He said, no, I don't understand why y'all just can't do something else. Like, why are y'all doing all that? Like, it's pagan. You're Christian. You shouldn't be doing it anyway. I said, you know what? Oh, God. Yeah, he had to go. Uh -uh. I said, we're not equally yoked. <laughs> And what we're not going to do is not even have the grace and level of maturity and understanding to realize that this has little to do with your daughter who's 14 and everything to do with a three-year-old who's expecting. Exactly. It's fun. Like nobody's thinking about what you talking about, sir. We're not worshiping fertility gods. He went through the no. whole thing. I said, nobody's doing all that. She's three. I said, I'm good here. Oh, child, yeah, he crazy. Mm -mm. It's not that serious. It's not, I don't know why we going. I said, no, I said, it is that serious. I said, because hypothetically speaking, if we were to move forward, get married and have kids, and my mother, who's a doting grandmother, wanted to take my new kids, like she's done all the other kids, to an Easter egg hunt at her job, I'm going to let her do that. Mm -hmm. No, that wouldn't happen in my roof. I said, so oh, well, there you go. <laughs> We don't need to be together. I said, and furthermore, it sounds to me that you're more Muslim than you are Christian. And you need to date Muslim women. Stop playing around with Christian women. Oh, so now I'm playing around with women? You are. You sure are. You are. Because you clearly have more Muslim values than doing Ramadan for 30 days. Exactly. Child, he was trying to get in where he could fit in and you tell you what you wanted to hear to get where he needed to be. Bye, yeah. bye, bye, done. I blocked him. I have not talked to him. Ciao. He was like, well, I would like for us to talk after I wrap up Ramadan. I said, it's not necessary. Uh-uh. It sure isn't. And that's why it's so hard 
to be in your position, in my position, where you're in the spotlight and people know who you are. And so people will come in and represent themselves based upon what they know about you and use that to get close to you. And then slowly but surely start to reveal who they really are. So it, it's so hard and I hate to be that way, but having a side eye, everybody that's everybody. new. But you everybody. have to, to protect yourself. Everybody gets the side eye. And I'm grateful that I wasn't married to it. You know what I mean? I was like, yes, I kept telling Sherelle, I told, she's like, but Winter, you've been feeling it. I said, one thing is for certain and two things are for sure. I know a narcissist when I see one yeah. and it don't take them long. You pay good enough attention. You can spot them within 90 days. I promise you, you can. They are the same tiger with the same strike. Yep. 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 I've never met a one that's different. And I said, he is a self-absorbed, arrogant narcissist. Mm -hmm. And he's an opportunistic person. And I said, it's it's sad that you guys have to learn this fight, you know, about your friend. She's like, he ain't not our friend. <laughs> but mm -hmm. he literally had the audacity to ask me how much I made per episode for the show. Oh, yeah. He was trying to become a cast member. Mm -mm. just the fact that he even parted his lips to ask you something like that that ain't none of your business sir when I told him absolutely not and that is rude and unacceptable and don't ever ask me something like that again unless you have a ring on this finger mm -mm. he flipped that's what's wrong with black people. Y'all always think somebody trying to take something from y'all. You can't just help somebody out from the goodness of your heart. I'm trying to prepare just in case they ask me to come back next season. You can't tell me nothing. Nothing. Why is that even your goal, though? Why are you tripping because I told you no? Mm hmm Because his whole game plan was to get on the show. That's what, the, the, that's what it's all about. And that's sad. That's really sad. But Same you way. clocked it and now he'll be gone. Out of there because mm -mm. your only ticket was me. Yeah. Mm -mm. Good, luck. Good freaking luck. But he's been trying to saddle up to all the cat. It's just crazy. Trying oh, to get. Yeah. Oh, all don't be surprised if he going and start calling people talking about you and saying that you said this and you did that and trying to ruin your name and start drama. He can try. The only issue he has is that right now he's kind of in between a rock and hard place because now Sherelle and Black know everything. Mm, okay. He would have more of a leeway if it was just my word against his. And yeah, but the fact that Sherelle and Black know that's God is good for that. Mm -hmm. Like that, I feel like God protected me and mm -hmm. kind of revealing it in a way where we all saw, we all know. So if there's any foolery that he tries. At least Sherelle and Black and people, everybody respects Sherelle and Black to be like, okay, now Negro, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They believe that there's going to be an accusation at the reunion that's going to come, not an accusation, a revelation that's going to come from the Tylers because when we were on the bus ride home from the cash trip, we got into a bit of an argument, and he thought everybody else was asleep. Me and Sherelle was still still up because he was talking to us. But he literally was like, I feel like, you know, I did my best to love her the way she wanted to be loved, which is why, because he surprises me with Louis Vuitton sunglasses at this cash trip job. And he was like, I did my best to love her the way she wants to be loved. That's why, you know, I saved to get her those glasses, but I can't even pay my effing rent right now. Well, what you doing buying folks glasses if you can't pay your rent, sir? And Sherelle was like, you shy, you need to hush. Oh you my God. Did they catch it on camera or were you not mic? We up? were not being mic'd. However, the following week when we had to do confessionals about the cash trip, production started asking everybody what happened on the bus ride home between Yusha and Winter. So somebody told it. Oh. oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody went sleep. Uh. Wow, now he's saved up for the glasses and can't even pay his rent, child. The your priorities messed up, first of all. Uh-uh. Wow. He told Sherelle, Sherelle was like, You don't need to be talking about that in front of them. He was like, Who cares? I'm willing to be honest. At least if people go to my page and see, they can see my music. 
Because that's what it was all about in the first place. Pretty much. Sherelle was like, Winter, when he said that, she said, I lit his. She said, I am done. Yeah. I am done. She said, that just blew me. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So it's going to be, I think somebody's going to bring up the fact that he doesn't have money. I think that definitely is going to be a thing. Um, it's not hard to believe. <laughs> In between him wearing the literally same thing every single you y'all will get to see a theme. Y'all gonna start to wonder if he's homeless because he literally wears the same gear almost every single. I'm just like, what he said it's his clothing brand. <laughs> been a really great season and it really has i'm proud of it it's been great for me i have no regrets no complaints child and yeah. he didn't get no cookies so i feel like boom that's even better even better even better I'm like i'm glad he don't even have the satisfaction um to brag because he don't good good and that's that's once again you showing god that i'm taking my time to vet people out to see who is really for me and who is not for me Absolutely, for so, sure ain't that a mess ain't that a mess that's why i be trying to get y'all to understand that there is so much that be going on that don't even make the show that if we only knew, you know what I'm saying? That's why it'd be so hard to judge this show because there's so much context that is not being shown to the audience. And this is just one example of that. And this is the tea I've been sitting on since last year. But yeah, Yusha was a mess, a mess. And Winter also gave me this bit of tea last week when I asked her, could I reveal this information to you guys? She hit me with this. He has like a personal vested interest that is weird to me. And it just caught me off guard because up until this point, I'm under the impression Yusha doesn't know anyone on this cast. And I mean anyone. The only thing I know about Yusha is that he claims he's he's seen he's a he's a fan of black love and he's seen joy clifton on ready to love i don't know anything else and also he's told me that he can back up black's account of the story with joy's best friend so i'm like well if you know that what she's saying is not true what is your why are you so passionately defending her next episode i believe Joy and I meet up and there's a discussion about Joy telling me that you should reach out to her. All that to say, I'm like, well, how did you get your number? So that's the part that kind of sticks out to me. And he didn't tell me that he reached out to Joy. Joy said you should reach out to her and apologize. And I'm like, huh? This is weird. And he still doubles down on his defense of joy, barring the fact that he has personal knowledge of Black being with Joy's best friend and knowing that he didn't do anything foul and he wasn't trying to pursue Sherelle. So this is like the first inclination I realized something is off. The math ain't math in here, and I don't know what the math is, but it ain't math in. So I'm confused and I'm feel confused. Furthermore, girl, them sunglasses didn't have no tags. Now I want to believe, want to believe he was childish and just trying to impress me. But if you can't afford the real thing, leave them glasses at Rebag and all the things of the resale shops. And if I want to buy myself a pair of resold Louis Vuitton sunglasses, I would do so. But not you. That's just you trying to do the most unnecessarily but it was not lost on us that them things that had no tags no stickers no nothing and then the packaging on the inside was 
Chinese, girl. So I don't know if they were refurbished or fake. That, I didn't do too much digging in, but they clearly were not new, child. I bought plenty of glasses from Louis Vuitton. They tags as pro appropriately attached. Yeah, I quickly told her those glasses were indeed fake and he probably got them from DH Gate or Alibaba. <laughs> But yeah, y'all, I told y'all I had some piping hot tea for you guys. Let it all soak in. This man was trying to get paired up with Joy, honey. And it seemed to me like he had a crush on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a mess. He tried to be on Ready to Love. He's talking to producers behind her back. He's trying to strategize and get people to listen to his music, buying fake glasses, capping for joy, dissing black. Like, yeah, Yusha was a mess, okay? A mess. That's why I told y'all, y'all can't trust nobody that do poetry rap, wear them beads, honey, and puka shells. Mm -mm, you can't trust them. You cannot trust them. But I'm just happy that my girl saw the writings on the wall and got rid of them. Okay? And this is why I rock with Winter. I rock with her hard. But yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think about all of this tea. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys immensely, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.